and I am showing at Gallery North. Um, they sent me some questions to answer, and I'm glad to do so. Um, question number one is, travel and adventure has had a major impact on your work. How do you relate to location, both local and abroad in your work? <clears throat> well, when I first started, uh, when I finished my studies with the Honolulu Academy of Arts, I uh, left Hawaii and spent a year traveling in Asia and um, uh, Europe. And as I traveled, I did, I painted and, and did drawings. And um, seemed like the most relevant thing to do. It was, you know, fascinating places and uh, I enjoyed the whole process. And those drawings and paintings got, uh, subsequently got me a scholarship at Southampton College. Um, since then, I've traveled and I've done the same thing. Um, and when I'm in my, in my studio, I have a tendency to uh, um, sort of work from memory more. But it's a good yin and yang. When, I, when I'm in my studio, I work from memory. When I travel, I paint the places I see and the people I meet. <clears throat> uh, question number two. Many of your paintings have a unique, aged surface quality to them that gives them the feeling of having existed for centuries. It gives viewers a sense that the stories being alluded to in the imagery happened in the past while giving them a very tangible physical presence. What is your technique for creating that effect? <clears throat> you might be surprised by the answer to this, but I learned a lot about uh, painting, uh, making paintings from house painting. Uh, when I was in college, none of us could make any money. Uh, so we all started painting houses. And uh, for instance, I would sand down a 250 uh, year old door in one of these old houses in Southampton and well, I'd, I'd go through generations. Uh, there goes the 50s as I sanded. Um, and they were testimonies to the age of the house. Um, so uh, what I do in my studio is I'll paint, paint, paint. And I don't like the way it looks. I'll sand the whole thing down and repaint it. And I think that's just a way of uh, me uh, developing my pictures. Um, it's not always what you put on, but sometimes what you take off in, in a canvas. <coughs> uh, question number three. Works like The Straits of Malacca feature a curious crew of characters, including a human-like figure with a reptilian head on a bicycle, some of which exude an unsettling dreamlike quality. Others, uh, like the mule, reoccur in many of your works. What is the relationship with these characters and how do you develop them? Well, I've been painting uh, 50, 50 years now, and I've noticed that there are re reoccurring uh, animals in, in Hawaii that's called the hamakua, which is like your spirit animal, and I'm not into that uh, too much, but I do relate to certain animals. Uh, donkeys I adore, and dolphins, and you know, I, I mean, I, I love all animals, I love dogs. So if you love something, and they pop up in your work. Uh, and the cast of characters, well that's stream of consciousness stuff, I couldn't really tell you uh, how I come up with that, except that they are reoccurring, and they seem to have some significance. Other than that, I'd almost have to make up an answer. <clears throat> okay, question number four. While most of the works exhibited in allegorical narratives are landscapes, several like Alice are portraits. What role do these people play in your narratives? We've had a farm in Costa Rica for uh, 25 years, and uh, when we bought it, no one knew us. My Spanish wasn't very good, but I just started painting everybody. It was very unique to me how these people had the patience and the curiosity to sit for an artist. So I had an open studio in that whole Pueblita, that whole farming community. Um, and for the, I think the first time in my life, I was really comfortable painting strangers. Of course, they'd stop being strangers when they'd see their grandmother appear on a, on a piece of paper. And it was a way for them to get to know us and, and for us to get to know them. But uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do just to paint a person sitting in a chair because Everybody has a story, and sometimes you can't, um, you can't fathom what that story is, but it's etched in their face. And uh, let's see here. Who are some of the artists uh, that have had the biggest influence on your work? Are there any current artists that have, the Im have impacted your direction? <clears throat> well, contemporary, uh, I'll say uh, uh, Picasso, uh, de Kooning, um, there's a lot of artists, Giorgio uh, De Chirico, um, but we just got back from Spain and the first thing we did, we landed in Madrid, we took a taxi directly to the Prado. 
And that's a place where if you're an artist, you, if you have to row a boat across the Atlantic, it's worth it. Um, you know, Goya, uh, Velasquez, Murillo, El Greco, and the list goes on and on. It's just incredible. That room at the Prado that is, you could park a 747 in, that is all Velasquez's, is, is, is a testimony to how great painting can be. Um, so that's, that's uh, I think I'm more of a 19th century guy in an odd kind of way. Uh, I like the narratives, I like the stories, I like the colors, especially the Spanish school. Um, and that sums up question number five. And that is it, and thank you for your time.